Shalom. Okay, this is the second video of this uh, of this year, and uh, we are now looking at a machlokas between the Cheskuni and the Sforno, if I'm not mistaken. Um, okay, you should have already seen the first video. I hope that you did, um, and I hope that you are understanding of the different points as to what the Sforno and the Cheskuni are arguing about. This is actually one of the more fundamental psukim in the Torah. There's really nothing more um, more principled um, about this this debate than uh, about the Torah really than the fact that we can't add nor subtract from the Torah and we'll get into that but I hope everyone realizes the seriousness of it if anybody in the Shir has yet to fully understand um, the simple pshat and the, the basics so I'd ask that you have uh, you have patience be- and go back and watch the first video uh, because if you don't understand the pshat you're not going to understand this next part um, I hope that you guys have, uh, I know you probably haven't, but you probably just watched it, took notes, and then went on. But I hope that at least in the beginning of your mind, you're starting to think about what these, uh, what the Rishonim are saying and what the Pesukim is saying. Now, the Pesuk, right, if we're going to ask ourselves the question, I hope you have your Google Doc in front of you. Um, you're going to need it. Um, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to ask you to, uh, I'm going to, ask you to, to send me um, by text message. And I am on your time. It is... Uh, well, it's, right now I'm taping this on Thursday night, but it should be uh, should be Monday morning by you, and it's Monday morning by me at the same time. And I'm expecting uh, within the hour to start getting a series of texts from you guys with explanations, and I'm looking forward to that because I'm sitting in speeches all day long at a conference. The the uh, pasuk had said that you're not allowed to add to uh, add or subtract from the mitzvahs. Okay, now. The uh, the basic the basic shot of that is that I can't add. We have 613 mitzvahs, which we've discussed in the past, are super categories, right? We discussed this last year when we talked about the uh, we talked about the the idea of rabbinic mitzvahs and Torah mitzvahs that there are 613 super categories of mitzvahs. These are the the major categories, and then um, within the super within the mitzvahs we have Torah laws which fall under those categories, those are mitzvah daraisas, and then we have rabbinic laws that fall under those. Those are laws that the rabbis made up to either enhance or protect the mitzvah to make sure that we don't violate them. Um, but the 613 mitzvahs, we're not allowed to add nor subtract from them, so I can't go along and say that, uh, that I can't have a, that I'm, I'm going to only observe 600 of the mitzvahs. 13 of them are not for me, or even one of them is not for me. That's not permissible. This is not, they're not multiple choice. These are these are mitzvahs that we have to do, and we're commanded to do them, all 613. Not uh, Unfortunately, today without our temple, we can't fulfill all 613, but that doesn't mean that we're not commanded in all 613 mitzvahs, nor does it mean that any of them are our choice to not follow them. At the same time, we also can't add to them. If there's an issue that's, uh, that's very close to my heart, a modern issue, let's say something along the lines of the environment, and I want to add a mitzvah that thou, thou shalt recycle, that everybody has to recycle, so I can say that it's a positive thing to recycle, and I can say that there's a benefit to mankind, and that there, there might, it's a good thing to recycle, but in no way, shape, or form can I get up today and say that the 614th mitzvah, the brand new mitzvah, is to, uh, is to recycle. In fact, if a prophet would get up and say that, uh, that he just spoke to God, and, uh, and he said that now, and God told me that we're adding in a mitzvah, there are now 614 mitzvahs, and uh, this is the 614th mitzvah, that prophet would by definition be a false prophet, because God has said he would never add in another mitzvah. Uh, so, and that's, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why we know, as different religions and different faiths came along, and said, no, 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 God told us different things, right? Islam is famous for that, saying that there's a new prophet, his name is Muhammad, and he gave us a new book, and this is... Uh, and these are the new laws, we know by the fact that in the Torah itself it said that you're not allowed to add nor are you allowed to subtract, that anyone claiming that God has said that they're going to add or subtract from it, by definition must be lying, because God said he would never do that. Um, so we're, we're bound by the mitzvahs of the Torah, and uh, logically we're bound by the mitzvahs of the Torah. Okay, so that's the, that's the Pasuk, and the context are the principles of the Torah, that's what we're discussing. And the second question I ask you: What are the uh, what are the uh, what's uh, what's the the context of the surrounding pasha? So this is this is Moshe Rabbeinu getting up in his last address to the people. What he's doing here is he's uh, he's saying, okay, understand that there are there are mitzvos, there are the six hundred thirteen mitzvos, of which these are not only principles, but these are two of the six hundred thirteen mitzvos. But there are also principles. There are there are mitzvos that are 
that apply to all other mitzvahs. So if I wanted to take away, if I said, you know, we just passed the, uh, the Chag of Sukkot. So if I said on Sukkot, you know, like the, the, the Lulav I'm okay with, the Esrog smells nice, the Hatasim smells nice, the Arabos, they're not so pretty, so I'm only going to take three of the four Minim, so they are, that, that would be forbidden. That's a principle that applies. That's the same thing with my Tefillin. Yeah, I don't mind wearing my Tefillin Shal Yad, but if I'm going to put something on my head, I'm not into that. Or, you know, like, uh, Shachris is okay, but Shachris and Mincha, that's too much. Uh, I'm going to take away from that. That's, that's not allowed. That's a principle that applies throughout each and every mitzvah. Okay, so let's see. Well, what's the next? So we have the Cheskuni. Right, so we saw the Cheskuni. Right, the Cheskuni says that one should, he takes us in a, in a strange, uh, strange way. He, he doesn't say that it applies to the mitzvahs, but rather he takes this to mean something completely different. He says it's not the particular mitzvahs that, that are applying here. I'm sure he agrees on a, on a legal level, on a halachic level, that yes, this, this mitzvah does tell us that one is not allowed to add nor subtract to the mitzvahs, but he's saying something much, much deeper here. And what he's talking is that one shouldn't diminish their awe of God. Right? Awe, A-W-E, I know with the New Jersey accent it's hard to hear awe, but it's, uh, but it's the, their awe of God, their, their absolute astonishment and amazement with God, it, it, the Rambam says that that level of awe produces a, a certain trembling in front of God. And not a literal where you sh- sit and shake, but you realize once one has awe of God, it's a certain realization that they, that they come to where they understand um, and they know the, uh, the seriousness of the matter here. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the idea. So that's, that one can never diminish their awe of God. They can never take God lightly. You know, it always bothers me. I see people... Uh, you know, when they when they pray, they uh, they chew gum when they pray. So I find that that that's a diminishment of awe of God, right? That's that's a you would never sit in front of anyone and pour him smack away, right? You you wouldn't do that. That's uh, it's a, a diminishment of the level of awe, and that's what the Cheskuni says here. The Sforno says uh, says something different. He says that one shouldn't think just because that the uh, the reason he takes this in a very legal way, but he gives an explanation as to what the the motivation would be. For one to to not keep uh, all six hundred thirteen mitzvahs, and what does he say? He says that one shouldn't think that just because the reason for the sin isn't currently applicable, right? So uh, so therefore the prohibition doesn't need to be heeded. I don't need to you know, that mitzvah that doesn't apply anymore, right? So on on uh, Shabbat we're not allowed to carry around a pen. Why? Because I might come to write with a pen. Well, today we all use our uh, our smartphones, right? So I have my uh, I have my phone right here. It is. It's like I got my well. Can't reach. It's plugged in. But I have my phone. I don't really write that much. So there should be no problem. I have this nice pen. I want to wear it in my in my. The shirt doesn't have a pocket. I'm not doing too well here. But I want to um I want to wear this pen in my in my suit and it just for show. So this whole concept of muksa, you know, where I'm not allowed to move this pen because I might come to write with it on Shabbat. And that doesn't really apply anymore. So uh, so that attitude where somebody comes along. And they say that they're that they're not they're not going to follow one of the mitzvahs because that mitzvah doesn't apply. So that the Sforno comes along and says that hey, you can't uh, you can't do that. That's something that's not uh, that's that's not allowed. That's not permissible. Okay. So what's the explanation of both these opinions? Uh, let's go over the opinions once more. If you guys want to do it in class, I'll push pause and see if anybody knows it. You can. If you just want to keep watching it, I'm going to repeat it right now. So it's up to you. But. The uh, but the the Cheskuni had said he took this to understand that that the mitzvah of uh, of Lo Sigur, of not taking away from the uh, from the from the mitzvah of the Torah it it means one shouldn't diminish their awe of God. While the Sforno took a different approach, and the Sforno says that one shouldn't think just because the reason of the mitzvah is no longer applicable, so so too the mitzvah itself isn't uh, it doesn't need to be followed, and uh, I can do whatever I want, right? So those are now. The, the Cheskuni's understanding this is that, it, that this mitzvah is addressing one's level of awe of God. They're what we call their Yiras Hashem. Right? Yira, again, here, it doesn't mean fear, but it means awe. And the Sforno, right, the Sforno says that the mitzvahs, right, he's saying that, the, that he's addressing the mitzvahs as a whole. The mitzvahs are always applicable, even if what we consider the reason for the mitzvahs are not applicable. Okay? That's the, uh, that's the idea. Now, well, let me ask you, let me challenge you with this, and this is always a question that we ask ourselves. Right. In order to uh, to fully to fully understand the uh, the points of uh, the points of, agree- of of disagreement between them, and to really understand it, first we gotta touch upon what do they agree on. And uh, so, what do you think? What do you think they agree on? And so you can pause this. You don't have to pause it, but maybe have a what, what is it that they agree on? Let's let's hear some good svaras. Uh, I can't hear it, but uh, but you can share amongst yourselves the good svaras. If you want to pause the video, you can pause it and share what you think they agree on. 
I'm going to tell you now what I think, and uh, take it. The point of agreement is that there's a command not to diminish one's relationship in regards to Avodos Hashem. As we, in our, in our service of God, right, we, we imag- like to imagine with service of God, like we're actually doing something for God. We're not, and God doesn't need our service. We're not doing something for God. The service for God is for ourselves. It makes us into better people. It gives our lives meaning. But uh, when we do what we call serve God, when we do do Avodas Hashem, we, when we engage in Avodas Hashem, so it's increasing the relationship with God. What the Cheskuni and the Sforno both agree on here is that we're commanded not in any way, shape, or form to diminish that relationship with God by diminishing our Avodas Hashem. Uh, there's a lot of ways we can diminish our, our relationship with God. But specifically here, this Pasuk is coming to tell you that when one is in their relationship with Hashem, in their service of God, one can't, one can't diminish their relationship to God. Okay. That's what they agree on. And that's a pretty simple idea. It would apply to many, many mitzvahs, not just to this. But where do they disagree? That's where the, that's where the fun is. Where, where is it that they disagree? And really, the question that they disagree on is, where in Avodas Hashem is one's relationship with God going to be diminished? Let me repeat that again, because you're going to need to send this to me. Where, where in their in one's relationship with God, do they uh, do they find disagreement? That's the uh, that's the question. Okay, where where in one's diminishing one's Avodas Hashem, where is it? Where is it that that one finds the breakup of the relationship? Okay, that's the uh, that's the idea. Okay. Now, what's the Cheskuni going to say? Again, the Cheskuni, uh, the Cheskuni had come along, right? What did, what did he say? He had said that, uh, that, that one's relationship, right? That, that one can't diminish their, their awe of God. So what the Cheskuni is going to come along and say is that, uh, is that your relationship with Hashem is diminished when one lessens the amount of Avodas Hashem of their, of their, I should say, really their Yiras Hashem that they have with God. That's what the, uh, that's what the Cheskuni is going to say. He's going to understand that, that one's relationship with Hashem is diminished when they, when they lessen their, their awe of God. It's uh, pretty simple. It's just a filling in the blanks, right? It all comes down to one's Yiras Hashem. Not necessarily their, their Avodas Hashem, right? But it's really their, uh, their Yiras Hashem, okay? That's the idea. Now the Sforno comes along and he says, now hold on, no, no. He says, one's relationship with Hashem, it's not, it's not, it's not lessened by their, by the lessening the awe of Hashem. I'm sure he would agree to that point also. But he's saying this mitzvah is coming and telling us that, that one's relationship with Hashem is diminished by not performing mitzvahs. When one simply says that, uh, you know, this mitzvah no longer applies. Then one's relationship with Hashem is, uh, is completely uprooted. Right, then the, the the relationship with Hashem is uh, is diminished, right? So that's the uh, that's the idea. Okay, now what's the uh, what's the idea here, right? What's uh, what's the idea? Here? So so let's look at this carefully, right? The Cheskuni the Cheskuni is really concentrating on what aspect here? The Cheskuni is concentrating on the the idea of uh, of Hashem. Right, that's what he's focusing on. While the Sforno is really focusing on asiyas hamitzos, the performance of commands. So let's write that down. Let's let's get that down pat. That the Cheskuni is speaking to us here about one's awe of God. That's what that's what the Cheskuni is talking about. While the Sforno here, right, the Sforno is talking about the uh, he's talking about the, the the really there's a there's a one's the level of, uh, of God is, is diminished by, by not performing mitzvahs. And it's kind of almost uh, it's kind of almost a level of arrogance. Where one says, you know, God, God put forth this command, and I don't really have to follow that command. Right? I don't, uh, I don't need to follow that command. I have, uh, I have other things I can do. Right? And this doesn't apply to me anymore. I, I know better than God. Right, that's the uh, that's the Sforno. So let's look into uh, to understand. I hope everybody got it. If you didn't get it, so then simply hit pause and rewind. But the clock is ticking. You know, we we only have a certain amount of time to learn Torah here together, and uh, right, I got it all day, but you, you don't. Okay, so the uh, so let's look. So what is the uh, what does the Cheskuni say here? Okay, let's look at the Cheskuni. Cheskuni is saying that one's relationship with God is diminished when their awe of God is lessened. Right, that there's a certain level of yiras Hashem, a certain level of awe, of amazement that one has to have with God. 
Right? And when that is, uh, when that's, when that's a, um, when that's diminished, one's relationship with God is diminished. Now, it's, it's incredible. If you think about this with a person, right? So I'd imagine that the people that surround the President of the United States, they have a certain level of awe and respect of him. Right? No matter how close they were with him before he was president, I imagine that, uh, that they have a certain level of respect. And I imagine, though, that as days go on, that level of respect somewhat diminishes. Right? There's a certain, the first day that the president walks into the Oval Office on January 20th, and his staff comes in to greet him and, uh, and tell him, Mr. President, oh, it's great that you're here, and it's great, wow, what an accomplishment. And uh, there's a certain level of awe, it's the president of the United States. But when they go into the Oval Office every single day and they're talking to the President every single day, I imagine that the, the level of awe somewhat diminishes and the level of respect that they have for, uh, for the President somewhat diminishes. Now you'd say, okay, but really that's in, that's in the sort of a ratio of the more, the more comfortable they are, probably the relationship is stronger. Right? Yes, they respect him less and they have less awe. But at the same time, one has to imagine that their relationship has grown stronger because that lessening of awe has actually made them more comfortable. I hope that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense to you, I'll rewind it because it makes sense to me. The idea is like this, that, that with another person, the more comfortable I become with that person, the stronger the relationship. Right? I mean, think about a relationship between a husband and wife. The more comfortable they, be, they become together, the, more, the stronger their relationship is. Right? The, 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 less, the less awkward it is. Well, we find something unique here, something amazing. When it comes to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the exact opposite is true. The relationship is only going to get stronger by the level of awe that one has. One can't be familiar and comfortable with God. It always has to have that level of, of the, not awkwardness, I wouldn't say, but a level of distance. That one has to recognize that they're standing in front of the King of Kings. That when they pray to God, it can't be, hey, yo, how you doing? Yo, yo, bro. It's got to be, uh, no, hey, this is God. So I sit there and I, I get a little sense of seriousness. I bend over and I talk to God with a, and a hunched back and a certain sense of, uh, of, uh, of humility. And, uh, and I talk to God that way. But really, all encompassed by a sense of awe. We know very little about God. Some of us know little, more, less than others. Some of us know more than others. But we know very little. But the little that we do know about God tells us a tremendous amount of how much respect we have to have for Him. And when we stand in front of him, that level of awe is what's going to really strengthen our relationship with God. In truth, the interesting comment by the Rambam that he, he has in one of his uh, responses that he sent to a letter of somebody, he said, uh, and the Rambam says, and I'm quoting by memory here, so I apologize, but the Rambam says that, that, uh, that really every decision we make in life, everything, no matter how mundane, really comes down to the level of awe of God we have. Because in truth, while what I have for lunch today is not going to really be governed by the Torah other than whether it's kosher or not, but if I have the, the choice of fatty food in front of me and the choice of, of, uh, of healthy food in front of me, so what's going to make that decision for me? Now, I know that if I eat the healthier food, I'm going to live longer, and I'm going to be functioning in a much, in a much, more, a much uh, more optimal level, and my, my learning of Torah and my my relationship with others and my, my, uh, my prayer is going to be stronger. Therefore, no matter what I do in life, it's going to be governed by my relationship with God. The Ramah says that's what Yeras Hashem is. That's what the awe of God is. The awe of God is when I recognize that every aspect of my life is governed by my relationship with God. When I bring God into every decision. It's not a spiritual idea or a metaphysical idea. It's a very realistic idea. It's very practical. My relationship with God is going to increase by the amount of awe that I have of God. And therefore, I want as much as possible that every decision should be governed by, by my awe of God. Now if, if I make a decision, then I'm going to diminish that level of awe of God. I have a level of, comfort, of comfortability where I, I pray and I find myself putting my feet up and I, uh, I find myself chewing gum and I find myself talking to the guy next to me when I shouldn't be. Instead of a, a level of seriousness... Where I sit in what we call Ema Vayira in, in Pachad, where I sit with, uh, with, a, with a certain sense of, of even fear uh, before whom I am standing. Dalaf Nemiatal may know before whom you are standing. As soon as I lose that sense of awe, the Cheskuni says, then you're violating one of the 613 mitzvahs. Uh, says the Cheskuni, I've got to keep up that level of awe at all times. And that's the, uh, that's the Cheskuni's approach. Okay, so that's, that's the Cheskuni. Let's look at the Svarno now. 
The Svorno said, talks to the guy who sits there and says, they, right, we give the example of the pen, this mitzvah doesn't apply to me anymore, right? I don't, I don't need to do this mitzvah. Hey, it's for other people, or it's for people of another time, right? You find this, uh, people reform Judaism. They sit there and reform the Torah. We're going to change the Torah, right? Torah is no longer applicable. What do you mean? We can't drive, we can't do this, we can't do that. What do you mean? It does, that doesn't apply anymore. No. God understood. God knew the future when he gave the Torah. When God gave the Torah, he gave it as a set of eternal laws. This was never going to change. God understood that these are these laws are principles, they're fundamentals, and they apply throughout all time. No matter what invention or technological advancement we make, there's a certain system that God put into place, and that's the system that we're going to follow. The Sworno says, if you would dare come along and say that, uh, that no, you know, I don't, I don't have to do that mitzvah anymore, that's a big problem. And that's a problem. And the real problem is it's a it's a lack of humility. It's a, it's arrogance. It's saying I know better than God. And it's incredible. You sit there and talk to people big, like, you know, I don't think we have to do that mitzvah. What do you mean you don't think you have to do that mitzvah? Where does that come from? What's the logic behind that? Eh, it's not that important. It's not that God felt it was important. Now if you want to come to me and say you know more than God, okay, so that's your approach to life. I'm not comfortable uttering a sentence of saying that I know more than God. If there's one being I know that I don't know more than, it's God. There's plenty of others that make that list of people that I don't know more than. But for sure, God. I'm never going to come up with the arrogance to say I know more than God. So if uh, so, people need a certain sense of humility in life. And that's what the Sworno says. This mitzvah is coming to tell you that you need a, a certain sense of humility. Without that sense of humility, really, uh, there's just nowhere to go. And that's the, uh, that's the Sworno. So you have two different approaches here. You have the Cheskuni that looks at this mitzvah that says you can't take away from the Torah. And he says, what's the actual prohibition? It's a level of awe, of awe, of euro. You have to make sure that you're not going to diminish your your, your Hashem. While Sforno comes up and he says something completely different. He says, no, it's, you can't, can't diminish the uh, the mitzvahs that you're doing, uh, the observance of the mitzvahs. you got to do all the mitzvahs. You can't come in with an arrogant attitude. So it's really the the... The Cheskuni is talking to one's level of awe of God, and the, uh, the Svorno is really talking to the, the amount of humility one has to have in front of God. And that's the debate, <coughs> excuse me, all within the context of, uh, of this prohibition of diminishing one's relationship with God. And that's the idea. I hope this was clear to you. What I'd like you to do now is, I'd like you to text me a, a summary of the Cheskuni's approach and the Svorno's approach. What I'd like you to hit upon is this idea of awe of God and, uh, and, what, and where awe of God extends to, what areas of our life that this, that this awe of God extends to. And I'd like you to look at also look at the Svorno. I'd like you to summarize the approach of the Svorno and his understanding of arrogance and humility and how that diminishes one's relationship with God. Guys, I can't tell you, I mean, I don't know because I'm not there yet and I'm, I'm, you're actually watching this when I'm not... When, I, when it's a couple of days before for me, but I gotta tell you guys, I miss you. I know, I know ahead of time that I'm gonna miss you. I, I can't tell you how much joy it gives me to be able to sit in a room with you and learn Torah. It's really incredible, and it's it's times like this where, like, yeah, like, uh, I know I, I get a little emotional. You know, truth be told, that I wish I was, uh, I wish I was there with you, and I wish I was uh, able. We have a great time together learning, and uh, it's the greatest endeavor man could ever could ever uh, could ever join in with. Uh, it's the greatest thing they could be engaged with is the study of Torah. And we're blessed that we're given this opportunity, that we live in a time where we're able to, to learn Torah. And it's a, it's a blessing of mine, and one that I'm so thankful to, to God and to my community for, that I have the opportunity to study Torah with you guys, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Okay, guys, have a great day, and uh, we're going to look second shear. It's going to be an incredible shear about, about tefillah coming up soon. All the best, guys.